What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel. Today we're going to be doing our game review on Madden 22. I'm going to try to keep this a little bit shorter than I have in the past. Try to keep it closer to around 10 to 15 minutes and not 30 minutes long. So I'm going to be a little bit brief about each section, but I'm going to give you guys the main points of what you need to know of whether Madden 22 is worth your money or not if you have not bought the game already. And we're going to go ahead and dive into a little bit of the good, the bad, and the ugly of Madden 22. Now, to start off with, we're going to grade this on six major categories, and these categories are slightly different from last year. We are going to grade it on the gameplay, the gameplay presentation, the overall game presentation, the depth of the game, the roster itself, and franchise mode, because that was a major sticking point moving from Madden 21 to Madden 22. We will then give this game an overall grade, and I will give it an individual grade for each category as we move through, so you guys can focus on what actually is most important to you. So to start off with the gameplay category, that is going to be probably the most important category for most people, um, because that's why you play the game. You play the game to have a fun experience. Well, Madden 22 is far from a simulation football experience, so for me, it's not a great experience. Now, the game plays very, very similar to the PS5, or rather next-gen version of Madden 21. In fact, it is a carbon copy of the the next gen version of Madden 21. It plays almost exactly the same. It plays a little bit slower. It has more broken coverages, It, but it is known for players running into each other, players knocking each other off their routes, players stopping mid-route to catch the football. Um, it's known for all the same problems that Madden 21 had. It is known for not great gameplay. That's not even going to mention all of the glitches and all of the uh, like I said, broken coverages and things like that that just make the game almost unplayable at certain points. And so, you know, the game has the potential to feel like a very good football game. I'm going to be honest with you. There are some very good moments. Whenever you guys play uh, exhibition mode or franchise mode or whatever it is here in uh, Madden 22, there are a lot of good things and a lot of potential that this game could have to have a very realistic experience and it just does not capitalize on it, unfortunately. So for me, the gameplay is going to get a C, uh, 70 grade, which is a C minus because honestly, they didn't do enough to improve the gameplay. It simply does not have what it needs to have and there's way too much going wrong with it to make it playable, make people want to play the game. Next up, we are going to talk about the gameplay presentation, which is actually one of the strongest points that Madden 22 has going for it. You guys will see here on the screen the presentation that we get with Madden 22 gameplay. You get a lot of nice things, you know, that they they basically built upon from last year, you know, dynamic crowd noises and uh, you know, more detail to the crowd, more presentation, the next-gen stats, all this stuff. This stuff is great, honestly. They've made a lot of very nice improvements to the game. Now, some of these things were broken, like the next-gen stats going into the beginning of the game, and so, you know, we had to have patches and things to bring us up to date and fix these things. So, you know, there's negatives to go along with it as well, but I can't hate on it too much because where we stand with the game right now, the gameplay presentation is, in my opinion, maybe the best it's ever been or or it's it's up there in terms of how good it is maybe i'm i'm uh, looking at it with with you know too nice of a lens or something like that because back in the day there were some pretty good uh, pretty good presentations with this game um, and it certainly could be better it is not at the top you know it's it's still mid range in terms of presentation compared to other sports games on the market so from a gameplay presentation perspective because of the improvement to it it is going to get an 88 grade which is roughly a B slash B plus grade from us uh, so that is one of the major positives of Madden 22. However, you contrast that with the overall presentation of Madden 22, and it is kind of a stark difference between what you know you want it to be, which would be realistic football, and then you get this, which is just kind of 
You know, we talked about Madden 21 being the Fortnite version of Madden appealing to little kids and things like that, and that's totally accurate for Madden 21. You can tell, though, for Madden 22 that they took a little bit more of a realistic approach. Honestly, I think that they took some... Uh, some examples from NHL in terms of their look because they went with the neon green look and things like that, but this still is not professional looking in my opinion. This is still not a realistic looking football game. They're still very much trying to appeal to a younger crowd um, while also taking some of that criticism into account. And so it's not as played up as it was last year, but it's still not good. So the best I can say about the overall presentation of the game is that this type of stuff is slightly improved from last year. So I'm going to give it a mid-range grade of a C. Uh, basically like a 76 would be kind of the range that I'm giving it here. This presentation isn't bad per se. It's not good per se, and it certainly is not a huge improvement over last year. Now in franchise mode, they did make some nice adjustments here, uh, but it just simply isn't good enough to make anything worthwhile here in terms of buying this game. Next up is the depth of the game. Now, I feel like a lot of people will probably disagree with my take on the depth of the game, but the major sticking point coming into Madden 22 was franchise mode. Did they do enough to make franchise mode playable for franchise mode players? Well, we'll get into that in a minute. The short answer is no, they did not. And honestly, they added in additional stuff that nobody cares about. At least I don't care about as a Madden player. Now, maybe other people do. Championship Series, The Yard, Superstar KO, Face of the Franchise, Ultimate Team. I really don't care about any of those things. I mean, face of the franchise, maybe a little bit, okay? I could certainly go face of the franchise, play it for a while, and it could be a little bit entertaining. But it does not carry the game like it did, uh, or like I thought it was going to last year. It does not have the depth necessary to really add all that much value to Madden 22. Ultimate Team, all it is is a money grab for EA. They're trying to get you to gamble. They're trying to get you to spend their money, spend your money, and they're successful at it, unfortunately, because that's to the detriment of the rest of the Madden community that aren't Ultimate Team players. Superstar KO, I could care less. The Yard, I could care less. Championship Series, they're just not my thing. You know, if you want to play competitively, sure, that's fine. If you want to have this Fortnite style of Madden where, you know, you're doing these, you know, seven on sevens or six v sixes and all that stuff, that's fine. You know, I'm not saying that you're wrong and I'm not saying that you can't play the game that way. But for my liking, for a depth perspective, there's just simply not enough depth here to make this game worth its opening day price tag. This is a game that's worth, it's like a patch to Madden 21. This is like maybe 10, 15, 20 dollars worth of content in terms of basically getting a new roster and slightly changing the way that the game plays. For most of you, this game is not going to be worth it. Honestly, I'm kind of, you know, upset that I even bought the game. You know, I have to buy it for the, for the YouTube channel so that I can make videos to help you guys out that do have the game. And that's totally fine. But the problem here is that the game's just simply not worth it. And we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit more whenever I get to my overall rating. But, you know, it's just simply not there for me. Next, I'm going to make a short note on the roster of the game. I mean, this is basically, like I just said, the whole sticking point for Madden 22 in reality, because that's what this game is. Is it a good enough roster update to make it worth buying the game? Like, that's basically what it is, is this whole game, Madden 22, is a roster update with a few tweaks from Madden 21. So is it worth, is it worth buying? Well... Let's take a look at some of the ratings. A guy like David DeCastro, who had an atrocious season last year for the Pittsburgh Steelers, is somehow still rated as an 85 overall and left out there into free agency even though he retired. Um, you know, there are even, even worse ratings out here as we go through. You know, J.J. Watt, who hasn't been good for multiple seasons now, somehow still hanging on to a 94 rating above players that have been better than him for multiple seasons now. Uh, a guy like Aaron Donald, who had, you know, a great performance, was a 99 overall, but then you contrast him with a guy like T.J. Watt, who should have won the MV, or sorry, should have won the Defensive Player of the Year award over him, somehow only a 94 overall 
that one doesn't make any sense to me. Somehow Khalil Mack is hanging on to a better rating than he has. I I'm not I'm not seeing it. I don't I don't quite understand. And when you dive deeper into the roster, there are way more problems than just that. I mean, like when you really dive into a roster and like let's say you're taking your favorite team for example, like let's say I took a look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, there are so many issues with the roster that you know, it doesn't surprise me at this point because They've said that basically the guys over there doing the rosters at EA have no clue what football is. They don't pay attention to football. They don't watch football. They've come out and openly said it. And then they brought in guys like Chad Ochocinco and Marshawn Lynch who also have no clue what they're doing and, you know, honestly are going to be super biased. And then they come in with ratings that are absolutely atrocious year after year. And so the roster is simply not worth it. You could come up with a better roster on your own on Madden 21 and save yourself the money of this game. And then let's go ahead and talk about franchise mode here. Franchise mode, as always, is a disappointment. Franchise mode this year, they added some nice improvements, but the the thing is, is everything that was there last year is here this year. I mean, it's like exactly the same. They just rearrange things to try to trick you into thinking that it was worth anything. So, you know, the look of franchise mode is new this year. We do get some new, you know, nice information on the screen and stuff like that. I'm not going to take that away from them. Um, And while I'm at it, I want to go back and give the grades for the, the previous categories because I think I overlooked them so the gameplay I gave the 88 to overall presentation got a 76 the depth of the game got a 65 overall grade for me which was a D and franchise mode got or sorry and the roster got a 50 which is the the lowest that I'll give which is an F minus it's as bad as it can get So back to franchise mode here, they did add some nice additions, so I can't take that away from them, but they didn't add enough to make this worthwhile. They had a whole year to work on this game. I understand COVID, I understand the pandemic and all that stuff, but it's simply unacceptable to come into the game with the state that it's in. The only true addition here is the staff. You know, you have your franchise staff, and does this really affect the game in a meaningful enough way to say that this was that great of an update. No, this is something that I feel like if I knew how to code and I knew how to how to influence a game and things like that, I could have with a a small staff put this entire thing together in about a month. Like this could not have taken that much effort. They, it doesn't affect the game in that much of a meaningful way. It truly doesn't. A lot of these uh, categories, a lot of these uh, these these talent trees simply don't have enough of an impact to say that this is that meaningful of an update to franchise mode. And then beyond that, you have the broken gameplay of Madden 22, and then you have basically the total lack of any other additions to the game. Yeah, you do have your weekly training, but a lot of people are complaining about the weekly training because it's almost oversimplified this year in comparison to previous years where you could have more depth and game plan more strategically to what your opponent is doing. And so, like, they just simply didn't do anything. And scouting mode, the the updated scouting is not even in the game yet. And like I said, Earlier on, whenever Madden 22 first came out, I said, don't expect the scouting update to actually come out in September. And guess what? We roll around to September, and it's delayed a month. I don't know if the scouting update's even ever going to come out. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I planned my franchises around not having the scouting update at all, because that's EA's MO. They're always doing the same thing, and I saw it ahead of time, and I tried to warn as many people as I could to just start your franchise modes because it's not worth waiting for this scouting update. So before I ramble on further about things that we all already know and, you know, we're already taking a look at and I've already gone over once, if not twice, if not three times, let's go ahead and give this game an overall grade. So franchise mode gets a 70, which is a C minus because they did add a couple of things, but again, they missed the mark. So the overall grade of this game actually figures out to be a D plus, which was a 69.83 grade. It's just simply not worth your money at all. I'm telling you guys, if you did not buy Madden 22, don't buy it. Don't have somebody else buy it for you. It's not worth it, especially with the increased price tag for, for you know PS5 games or, or 
uh, you know, next gen games, it's just not worth it. You know, like I said, essentially what Madden 22 is, is a 10 to $20 DLC for Madden 21. It is simply not worth the money in your pocket to buy this game. Stick on Madden 21 if you are still there. And, you know, you can even play the next-gen version of Madden 21 if you're trying to play a next-gen game. It plays almost identical to Madden 22. So if you really want to play Madden 22, play Madden 21 next-gen version and get yourself a roster update. Create yourself a roster on there, and you're there. You know, that's all you need to do. So is it worth your money? No. Is the game good? No, it gets a D plus grade. It sucks to say it, but what really needs to happen is they need to take a year off of making this game and they need to actually focus on giving this game some depth and some value. And that's just the reality of the situation. I've never been an EA hater. I've never been a Madden hater, but I have to give the most realistic grade I can. And I have to try to save some of you guys from buying a game that just simply is not worth it. So if you found this video useful, make sure you leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new and comment as well. I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you have a good one.